So, this week's recipe is going to be spring risotto with asparagus and mushrooms. So, it's going to be a little harder than last time. This is going to involve some high quality, ultra fine cooking methods perfected by uh, years of cooking experience, but you'll be able to do it today. So what we're going to start off with is we've got ourselves some asparagus and some mushrooms that both need to be diced and some onion that needs to be minced. That's one step further than dicing, but you can handle it. So we'll start off with the mushrooms because those are easy. You're going to need a, almost a pound of mushrooms, about three quarters of a pound. So this is easy though, you just get your mushrooms here. You're going to just chop them coarsely, so you got them in a little pile, and then just start going for it. Just chop away, chop, chop, chop. It's kind of a good stress reliever. You know, hard day at the office, or at the PETA campaign, or whatever. Voila, those have been chopped coarsely. So we'll move those off to the side so that we can now focus on our asparagus. So asparagus, you're going to want to rinse it first. I've already rinsed these guys. And then you're going to do a funny thing with it. So the first half of it is really woody and fibrous and does not taste very good. So just grab one tip and grab one at the base and bend it in half till it breaks. The woody part will not bend, and the non-woody part will, so they'll separate right at the junction. So just, just like that. Some of them you only get like an inch, but trust me, you don't want to eat that woody part, so just, uh, just go with what you get. So once you get these guys all broken up, you're going to take them, and you're going to do exactly the same kind of thing, but you're going to hold them together so that they're not flying all over the place. You just want them about, you know, maybe a half an inch, quarter of an inch. You don't have to get too technical on it, but you just just going to chop them up a little bit. So next, we're going to mince our onion. So the onion here, maybe about half an onion, half a small to medium sized onion. And we already know how to chop onions, but mincing is a whole other animal. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put it into quarters. And then we're going to grab it on both ends. Slice it through. Turn it the other way. Slice it again. And then just take this little pile of chopped onion and just go over it like this. Just keep chopping away at them until they're all about a quarter of an inch long. Like so. And then you're good. So another part of the recipe calls for lemon zest. Now zest is the outermost portion of the lemon skin. So to remove that, you don't need anything too fancy. You just need to get yourself a cheese grater. And instead of using the coarse part of it, use the really fine part. Just take your cheese grater, take your lemon, and just kind of grate away at the lemon until you stop seeing yellow and you see that kind of white inside rind there, right? Like that. And once you get that down to that portion, just turn it over a little bit, grind away more of that yellow part, and that is the zest. You're grinding off the zest. And that has a really, really great flavor to it that we will add towards the end. so you get an idea of what it looks like. That is lemon zest right there. Now this recipe also calls for dry vermouth. Now if you happen to be a martini connoisseur, such as myself, 
You may have a little dry vermouth laying around, and if you've got it, great, use it. However, for the rest of the populace, just regular white wine will work just as well. It's not going to taste all that much different, and this is going to be a lot cheaper than that. So I'm going to be using white wine, even though I have vermouth, and I would advise you to do the same. So, the first thing we're going to want to do is saute those mushrooms. For that, you're going to need a frying pan, those mushrooms will be so coarsely chopped, and some oil. So go ahead and set your burner to medium high, throw your frying pan on there. Once that heats up, you're going to want to add your oil, not too much, maybe about a tablespoon-ish. Once that gets good and hot, you'll know that it's hot when it starts just running all over the pan. It's not so thick as when you first pour it on there. Once that gets hot, you can add your mushrooms. That sizzling noise lets me know that it was hot. Oh yeah. And you're gonna wanna cook the mushrooms for about eight to 10 minutes. Basically, you want them to kind of wilt up and release their moisture. You'll know that when it happens, because when you first throw them on there, they're really dry and they're all kind of, you know, light in color, and once they're cooked enough, they'll be squishy and they'll be a much darker shade, usually like a light brown, and they'll look wet. So just keep it moving around in the pan. If you're ultra savvy, you can just kind of do this little flippy thing. And if not, there's absolutely zero shame in employing a spatula. Basically, you just want to cook it evenly on all sides. So just keep moving, flip them around. So you can see that the mushrooms have darkened a lot in color and they're starting to give up some of their liquid. That's a good sign. They've only got maybe three or four minutes till they're done. 